Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Colvin, and I'm here with uh, people from Water Defense. I've got Scott Smith, Executive Director, John Pratt, and Mark Ruffalo, of course. I uh, may look a little familiar, an uh, Oscar-nominated actor. Um, Mark, I want to start with you. Tell me a little bit about Water Defense, uh, why you founded it, and, and you know what, what caused you to want to pay attention to these issues. Well, um, it really came out of um, my work with um, the environmental movement in, in upstate New York where they were uh, going to engage in hydrofracking. Um, and um, the thing that motivated me um, to fight hydrofracking was actually going and visiting a community whose uh, water had been affected. And uh, it became very clear how, uh, how much we take our clean water that comes out of our tap for granted and how devastating it is uh, for us when we lose it. And so um, I, I started looking around and I, and I saw that uh, water was an issue that, that, that was going to be coming up big time. And um, I was seeing a lot of other communities that were fighting the same issues because of fossil fuel extraction, tar sands, mountaintop removal, to some extent uh, deep sea drilling. And um, so I wanted to create a place for, for people to come, affected people to come and tell their stories. And um, I believe that, uh, that, that water is a, is, a, is a human right and that clean water is a human right. And now it's extended to, I believe, that knowing what is in our water should be a human right as well. And so very important. And for us, those of us, uh, you know, here on Cape Cod, we're surrounded on, on three, uh, almost four sides by water. And uh, we have, you know, a sandy soil, a very single source aquifer. And so we're very concerned about the quality of our water. We may not have to deal with something like fracking here on Cape Cod. We do have to deal with things like emerging contaminants, like, uh, you know, all, all other sorts of, of issues uh, here on the Cape. You know your stuff, yes. And that's why we're here. I mean, you guys are basically a, um, the human body or any living organism, a, a model for, for it. So. And all that stuff ends up here. You're basically downriver from the world. Exactly, exactly. And so we have a lot of concerns. And Scott, of course, so you are from here on Cape Cod and talked to you several years ago about uh, your product, OpFlex. And, and tell me a little bit about that product and how you've gotten connected with water defense. Well, it's really evolved that the time we spoke, I was going back and forth with the, with the Gulf. Mm -hmm. And spending time with the fishermen and living in the Gulf, I realized the way the government was doing the water testing, they were putting things on top of the surface for a split second. And I had two little kids at the time, now they're almost out of college, uh, and I realized that here I am depending my family on the, I didn't understand anything about it, and I had this technical background. So after I, I, I decided to play around with submerging the, the technology and, dis and realized that I could detect subsurface plumes in the Gulf and I just started to continue to work. And I had some scientists reach out to me from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and then started working on these ind indicators in the water column. And I'm surprised that the water column is what's above the surface and beneath you know, it's what's beneath the surface and what's above the bottom. Right. Life, life is in the water column, and no one was testing the water column, and I couldn't believe it in the Gulf of Mexico. So I, came, I became obsessed with that. So I started to work on that, and lo and behold, there were other disasters. And Mayflower, Arkansas happened, uh, where a diluted bitumen, otherwise known as tar sands oil, um, spilled. So it kind of evolved over time, and I couldn't believe there was no way to test for the cumulative effects of what's going on in the water column. And that's kind of staggering because there's a, yeah. there's a lot going on in there and it, it so much depends on it, whether it be a uh, marine life or, or human life. It, it's so unbelievable, I'm hesitant to ex explain that we have this advanced society, we have instant communication, we pr have extended lives, practically cured cancer, but we can't test our water uh, with any new technology. It's mind-boggling. So how did you get hooked up well with water defense? Um, who, who found who in, in that situation? Actually, John Pratt found me and then connected Mark. And I was in the middle of Mayflower, Arkansas, donating my time with this water column testing, you know, trying to start my own nonprofit for water testing where this belongs. And, uh, and had, been on, had some news coverage and had some you know, police trying to remove us from public lands. And all of a sudden, John, it, 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 this is a success story of using information technology and tweeting and Facebook and combining with real world. Because the people that work for me know it's more important to be face to face and to make things happen. But to truly combine technology 
uh, social media with boots on the ground. And, exactly. that, and that's how it all evolved, and, yeah. you know. I mean, you know, at Water Defense, we'd love to see a cultural shift from an emphasis on uh, entertainment to an emphasis on the environment <clears throat> and see kids start to use social media to see change in their own areas. And so we're really excited to be partnering with the college in this way and the students, have them learning about their water, tweeting about their water, investigating what's affecting their water. So we feel really happy to be here. I like to say that <clears throat> Cape Cod Community College is sort of like a pilgrim's landing for three pilgrims that um, came here via Mayflower. So. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, there it's you go, Mayflower. absolutely. Yeah. A good way to yeah. tie yeah, it in. We found, yeah. we found each other in Mayflower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He sent me a And, and, just and the here questions, you are on Cape Cod. Just yeah. the that questions happens. you're asking, and, and I can see your connection to the water is so refreshing. Um, it's hard at Water Defense um, to give a message that people really understand. You have to boil things down very simply. Um, so I came up with a bumper sticker, which I'm planning on tweeting tonight, which is, you need clean water. Do you get it? Interesting, interesting. Yeah. And I think it, it's so easy for people to think that it's not a problem because, you know, bottled water is so readily available and, and you know, we can turn on our tap and, and for the most part think we can drink it. But I saw yeah. a statistic on the website that it's a very small percentage of the water in the world is, is actually clean and safe to drink, which is yeah. really scary. And we need Tiny. to protect it. Yeah. yeah. We need to protect and then you go to West Virginia. You know, where 300,000 people lost their drinking water. Um, I like to talk about Scott's test down there. He went to the river and he tested it um, a couple days after the spill, and there was a non-detect. Um, why was that? Because those chemicals went downstream towards Cincinnati, where people had to shut off the intakes for their drinking water down there. And if it didn't smell like licorice, no one would have known that that passed. Wow. If you showed up with an instantaneous water test, you never would have known it happened. So really what Scott's technology does is it sits in the water over time. Anything that passes through that water body gets picked up by it, and then you know what passed through the water, and that's why this is a revolutionary technology. So before we get into talking about how you will be working with the, the students at, at Cape Cod Community College, talk to me about what kind of impact you want to make on people that are coming here uh, tonight to hear you speak. We're going to be talking to the students, um, and we want to let them know that their voice is, does really matter, and we want them to know um, that when they formulate an opinion, it's powerful, so make it an informed opinion. Um, we want them to know that they're coming to a fantastic place, Cape Cod Community College, that's going to develop state-of-the-art water testing protocols, and they're going to have a great curriculum here. Um, we want them to know they're in a great place, and we're partnering with them. And the, I would add to that that one person can make a difference. Yeah, and absolutely. it's all about education. Yeah. It's about arming in an open source way with technology. So any person that attends tonight, any young kid that right. goes here, can go out and probably save eelgrass, save clams, oyster beds, and make a difference. Because <laughs> even if there is not an oil spill, and hopefully there won't be on Cape Cod, the, the asphalt and the stormwater runoff needs to be dealt with. And this technology can arm kids in a very simple way to make a difference. Yeah, yeah. and um, um, we just heard today from a fisherman that saving the eelgrass means saving the bass. Yes. You know, so it's really connected, and so. Right, and something know. that, you know, it's all of those things are all interconnected. Yeah. Mark, do you feel that, that bringing your kind of star power into this is something that will um, get students interested in maybe a subject that they that, that might skip the headline? Uh, you know, I, I, I saw this happen, well, you see, I see it happen with a lot of things, but um, the hydrofracking, uh, anti-hydrofracking movement in New York State, I spent a lot of time uh, going to um, state schools, uh, state colleges. And um, those people changed, they literally stopped hydrofracking in New York State. And um, the kids... Uh, they're, they're changing the world. They, they, Today, they, they have a chance of doing things that we could only dream of and we could only scratch the surface of. And with their ability to reach people, social media, to get, to get alternate ideas and viewpoints out in the world is extraordinary. They can create content. They can literally change their world. Anything that they can imagine, they can make happen today. And so they're, it's, it's, and, and I love them. I, I, I know what it's like to be them. I, I love to see them get turned on. They have a great barometer for bullshit. They don't, they don't suffer fools kindly, you know. And so 
they're constantly being sold something. And so it's, it's, I find it a, a really great place to, um, to come and, and really get a sense of what the community is about. And I have a feeling here on Cape Cod, and especially here at Cape Cod Community College, um, where you'll be working with the environmental science students, I think you'll find a lot of people who have grown up here and who care about the environment, who are aware of the issues and want to do something. They get so it. I think it's, yeah, they really do. The young people get it. They really do. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's and particularly so here in Cape Cod, they get it. Exactly. So, um, you know, anything else that you'd like to say, uh, perhaps about the partnership uh, that you're going to have uh, here at the college and what you're looking forward to, uh, again, in working with our students? I, I would like to say that Cape Cod Community College is really visionary. I mean, I've been to over 45 oil spills since I went into BP, and, and talking with Mark and John, that this is the first educational institution that reached out as a result of a presentation in 2012, and they have the vision here. Uh, you know, Dean Cody, Judith Underwood, uh, Louise Andre, and if they didn't follow up, we wouldn't be able to have this night to educate and arm the kids. So the credit really goes to the community college, and it right here on Cape Cod can actually change the world. And by the way, it's we're getting as much from community college, from Cape Cod Community College, as, as they're getting from us. They are going to develop the protocols that will go out into the world with these with this testing, and we need your expertise. We we need this place's expertise because there's only so far any of us knuckleheads can carry it, and now <laughs> and now we got to turn it over to, to, you know, your science uh, department. Well, it's all about getting the ball rolling and getting the kids uh, engaged. And I think, as you say, once you kind of set them free, it'll, it'll keep going. I yeah, agree. and I also want to say that tonight's event has um, attracted leadership from Waterkeeper Alliances and Riverkeeper members from um, as far as Charleston, South Carolina. Wow. We've got um, a group from San Francisco that have a, um, a software technology that they're looking at um, potentially having integrate within this relationship. So. Um, there are some really great people who are taking this very seriously, and we're happy that they're here. Wonderful. So. Well, I thank you all so much uh, for, for taking the time. Looking forward to the presentation and uh, sure. looking forward to seeing uh, what, what we can do with the students here at Four Seas. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. thank you so much. Of course, uh, Mark Ruffalo, John Pratt, and Scott Smith of Water Defense. I'm Sarah Goldman. <laughs>